Hello, my friends. I am Pastor Jean-Michel Etienne, the Sabbath School Director of the New Jersey Conference. You know, my friends, as Seventh-day Adventists, the Sabbath School lesson is the daily fuel to get our spiritual energy. It is my privilege to return to you this week with the Sabbath School lesson panel to present to you the lesson number nine, Beware of Covetousness. I like to remind our church health leaders that we will have the training at the conference office this coming Sunday, February 26th, for both English and Spanish. Remember here in New Jersey, we love you, we love you, and together we will go through Sabbath school making disciples. So my friends, enjoy the lesson with the panel. If you like the lesson, please subscribe. Thank you. All right, greetings uh, to you one more time. It is another week and time for us to uh, discuss another lesson study. Uh, we are privileged to have uh, this lesson with us uh, for this quarter, managing for the master till he comes. So it is a great honor for us to be in your presence, uh, wherever you are. We pray that this uh, lesson will be meaningful and will be a means of bringing about change in our lives, in your lives, and all those who will listen and, and hear. So we are going to uh, introduce our panel once again. Uh, we have been uh, with you. And if you have, you're watching us for the first time, we would like you to get to know us a little better. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Elder Buzi, who is going to introduce herself uh, at this time. I am Pastor Marie Buzi, and I'm serving at the Cardingwood Park Church as an elder. All right, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Pastor Peggy. I am Pastor Peggy Fullicent, and I am the pastor, associate pastor of Maranatha Haitian Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you. And uh, Pastor Jenico. Hello, I'm Pastor Fortunato Dredenico, and I pastor Tom's River, Browns Mills, and Heightstown, English. Okay. All right, thank you so much. And then Pastor uh, Sterling uh, from the uh, Late Nelson uh, Adventist Academy. Uh, we are grateful to be with you here this evening or this morning or whatever time you are watching. And so we like to begin uh, uh, as we do all of our events here with uh, a word of prayer. And Sister uh, Pastor Peggy is going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we can come together and study your word, Lord, and also just give insight to those who are needing some instructions and guidance on managing the funds that you have given them. Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us so that we are speaking what you've called us to say. You see, use the words that you've called us to say, Lord, as well as um, give us the wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to interpret the lesson so that it's clear for those who are listening and watching. We thank you for all you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So today we are moving on to a new set of lessons. Lesson number nine. Lesson number nine, beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness. And so uh, the, the lesson is interesting because uh, we will see sometimes uh, people homes, right? They will have beware of the dogs, right? Uh, uh, and there's a reason for that because uh, the dogs may come upon you when you're not noticing, right? Mm -hmm. So beware, beware of that. So what is covetousness? Um, how do we define uh, covetousness? Who would like to who would like to take that one? I would take it. Okay. Covetousness is uh, an inordinate uh, desire that people have to the loss after something that is not theirs. You know. Okay. Loss after something that is not theirs. Right. So we're going to. Uh, develop that. Uh, we're going to look at examples of people who were covetous, and then we're going to try to find out a solution uh, to to uh, to stop us from being uh, covetous. So let's go at our anchor text uh, for this week. 
which is Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. And if you find it, just just read it. Uh, just read it for us. Luke twelve. Oh. All right. <laughs> Luke twelve verse fifteen it says, "Then he said to them, Watch out! Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions." All right. So it, 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 be aware, right? So here again, Jesus is saying, "Be aware that there's something that is coming upon you that." Uh, uh, you may not be conscious of, right? Be aware of the dogs. Uh, and so if you look back at the, 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 the reason why Jesus mentioned this, right, is two brothers who came to him and one of them was saying, well, you know, he's not giving me uh, my portion. And uh, he was looking for Jesus to say, well, you know, according to Deuteronomy, the older brother should get double mm -hmm. and you know, just give him what belongs to him. And Jesus did not, Jesus did not do that. Jesus uh, pointed out that a man's life does not consist in the things that he possesses. But do we really believe this? Mm. Uh, do we believe that our life does not consist of the things? So what, what is my life then? If it is not the amount of money I have in the bank, if it is not the house that I live in, if it is not the amount, I mean, the cars that I drive, what does my life consist of? What, what is Jesus' point here? There's more to life than material things. There's more to life than that. Um, and he wanted him to understand that, yes, the law may say that you're supposed to have the portion of the older and all of that, but there's more to it because if that's all you're seeking after, it won't mean anything when you die. So there's more meaning into life that we need to look. There's nothing wrong with having possessions and material things. It's understanding that it doesn't mean much based on your life, eternal life. That, that, that's right. That's right. And, and look at how society, we, we measure people by their net worth, right? So yep. we say, okay, Bill Gates is worth this. Or, or, mm -hmm. you, know, or you may say, uh, your, your net worth is $2 million. Or mm -hmm. some people's net worth is $1,000 or <laughs> you know, $10 or whatever the case is. We, we are measuring people by their possession. And their profession. And their profession. profession. Exactly. Because every time a person comes to you, they ask you, so what do you do? The first thing we say is our job, but we're beyond our job. But somehow we, we place our whole life based on our profession when a person asks us who we are or what do we do. And that's all we can identify as is based on our profession. If you're a doctor, immediately your first name becomes Dr. Peggy so-and-so because now they're like, oh, I need to respect you based on the doctor. And somebody else who's standing next to is not a doctor, they won't get a title. But if they are an engineer or something, they based our value and our worth on our profession as well and the titles that we hold. We do. I think as Christians, we, we need to disconnect ourselves from those positions, you know, to see ourselves without the position that as children of God, we all have values before God, not because of our possessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is so true. Uh, and we tend to, uh, as soon as a person describes uh, their, their work, our opinion of them start changing. Yes, it does immediately. <laughs> immediately. Sadly. Sadly, very sad. <laughs> and so we 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 value because some you, you may think, right, that all the things that you have, and you may wonder how can I how can I live without these things? But then let's say fire comes and it destroy your home. Uh, you realize that uh, you can live without these things. And these material things, you can actually get them back. And then you value life more than the material things that yep. you, you lost in the yep. fire. Yep. Uh, so very, very important. So our life does not consist of that. Society is telling us the opposite, right? So get uh, the American dream, get, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Certain type of cars, you know, uh, wear certain type of clothes, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, because some of us find identity in the way we dress and, and we're trying to send a message. Uh, uh, so we, we, we tend to believe that lie. But Jesus warned about this. Uh, I mean, the Bible warns against this. So Exodus chapter 20 and verse um, 17. Exodus twenty seventeen. It says, Exodus 20, verse 17 says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. So it's part of the Ten Commandments. It It is is important to God. Yes, and, and this is one of those commandments that I think we don't take seriously, right? Mm-hmm. So you talk about mud, you talk about stealing, uh, forest, uh, you know, the Sabbath and all of that. But this one, uh, we, we may not take it that seriously because unlike, unlike killing somebody, unlike committing adultery, this one comes in uh, and we may not be even aware of uh, mm-hmm. what is happening in, in, in our heart. Mm-hmm. And when I look at this, interestingly, you know, the first commandment, you know, talks about, um, you know, you shall have no other gods, right, before me. And then the last one is about do not covet. And interestingly, uh, this commandment is a safeguard against the others, mm-hmm. especially the last six. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't covet, you don't kill people for what they have. Mm-hmm. You don't steal from them. You don't covet a man's wife, therefore you don't commit adultery with a man's wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't covet, so you don't tell lies on people. Mm-hmm. So this one uh, is really a safeguard against um, against the, 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 the others. So now uh, we, we describe uh, what covetousness now. Now let's suppose, or, or what is the difference between now me having uh, ambition, Mm-hmm. And and covetousness, right? So, I I visit somebody's home. They have a very nice house, and I say, well, you know, I want a house like that. I I would like to have a house like that. Is something wrong with me saying that? No, there isn't anything wrong. It's what happens afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pleased with what you have, but ambition to have something bigger? Because you may need something bigger. You know, are you just, you know, saying that I wish to have something like this, a home that that nice, and then you're willing to sacrifice working on the Sabbath, taking three jobs, sacrificing your family, all that, just to have that home. It's, you know, wanting something nice does, is not wrong because we want great things and God wants to give us great things. It's how we, um, how we attain those things. Right. So how we attain them, right? I, I so- think- Yes, go ahead, Sorry. I, I think it's also because um, uh, the desires that we have um, is, is God gave us, right? Mm-hmm. One, of course, we want good things. We want love. We want um, family and everything like that, um, yeah, you know, nice things. But I, I, I think it's when that desire becomes an obsession and it, and it overtakes, um, you know, uh, and, and it becomes then our, our idol. Mm-hmm. and and then you know then it becomes something above god or we place uh ourselves um uh above god and uh that then it becomes a problem then it becomes covetousness it becomes uh, lust and uh and then you know because you know desire is uh there's nothing wrong with desire but it, it, mm-hmm. it's then um how we prioritize our desire our desires mm-hmm. you know all right so so talking yeah. about talking about desire so let's go to james chapter one and verse 15 because james uh uh point out something there very 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 important james 1 15 says then after desire has conceived it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. All right, can you read vo- the verse before that too, as well? 14. Sure. Uh, it says, But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and, and enticed. 
Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Wow. All right. So, so there seems to be a, a, a progressive um, state here. Yep. And so the evil desire. So desire itself, right? You have good desire is fine. But when you have uh, that evil desire, then you start acting on that desire. And then that desire leads to, to sin. And, and sin leads to, uh, to death. So it seems as if now uh, that one of the things that we have to try to do is to control our desires, right? Mm -hmm. What are we desiring and why? Mm. So someone has a mansion and so you drive around, uh, you know, certain neighborhoods, you have beautiful houses. I mean, you could admire the houses, you can see how beautiful they are, but why do you want one like that? Right. Well, what's 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 the aim? Or someone is driving us on the car. Why do you want one like that? And people become jealous mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for the people, and that jealousy can lead to envy and and covetousness. Yeah. And so we have to we have to be able to control that. All right. So so we said uh, uh, I can admire other people. Right. I can. I can, uh, I can, I can have certain ambition, right? That uh, Pastor Peggy is a doctor. I say, well, I want to be a doctor as well, right? But well, what is my, what is my aim behind it, right? Am I jealous of her? Then that becomes a, a problem, right? So working towards uh, a certain goal. So we are going to try to learn from um, some examples of, of people uh, the Bible gave us here. Uh, who allow covetousness uh, to basically lead them away from God and, and cause problems for them and, and, for, and for the world. Uh, taking, for instance, uh, Lucifer. So let's look at him as an example. And his covetousness was what? That of uh, position, right? So Isaiah 14, Isaiah 14, uh, 12 to 14. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14 says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, Lucif Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you, how you are cut down to the ground? You weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. Mm. I would be like the most high. Now, the interesting thing, I've, <laughs> I mean, I read this verse so many times, but what stood out to me this week is um, in verse 13, it says, for you have said, in your heart in other words he didn't say it loud he didn't say it to god is in his heart mm -hmm. now what, what does that how scary is that <laughs> i mean uh that our covetousness uh we don't have to say it out loud we don't have to tell the other person but is what is in our heart yeah mm -hmm. From what we see in the lesson, it seems that it usually starts in the heart, yeah. secretly, you know, and then it takes roots and it comes out. Exactly. If it's not controlled by, you know, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and that's that's the scary part of this because, uh, I mean, everything that we do, uh, you know, it begins in the heart. For example, mm -hmm. you know, killing someone, you know, murdering someone, you premeditate, you plan it. So you, 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 it starts in the heart and then you act on it, right? Adultery and so on. But covetousness can start there and basically stay there without you. Uh, uh, so you don't have to go out and buy the house to covet the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it, it's, it's in the heart and it remains in the heart. And there you, 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 you're wishing that you have uh, uh, something else, uh, someone else's um, property. So the desire or the lust 
after something that belongs to someone else. And in Exodus, it tells us, it, it outlines, you know, don't cover the person's house, the person's wife, the person's servant, mm -hmm. uh, or anything that the neighbors have. Mm -hmm. And you will be amazed at how much, you know, uh, some people are wishing, okay, I wish, you know, I have a husband like this, right? <laughs> it's a, mm -hmm. or, or wives like this, or, or we, you know, people look at certain relationships and they are covetous. And now you can admire, right? You can admire a couple, admire the relationship, admire how they work and so on. Uh, but we have to be careful how we draw the line. Uh, you admire somebody's house or somebody's um, possession. It, it seems that even Satan, he wasn't sure where that was going to lead him. Yeah. yeah. He just started to covet, you know, the position of Christ. He was a light bearer. God created him, you know, beautiful. He had everything. He was bright. And uh, Jesus, they called Jesus the morning star. He was like a morning star too. He was next to Christ. But, you know, he was not satisfied with what he had. The contentment wasn't there at all. He wanted to be above mm -hmm. God. So yes. That is, yes. that is a sin that we all have to be careful of because it really started in, in heaven, in Lucifer's heart. And if you can start with a perfect being. Exactly. Perfect mm. being. Yeah. 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 What, about, what about us? So what, what, what did he really want, right? So let's look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse 9. Uh, what, 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 what does Lucifer, or what did he want, and, and, and what is he getting now? Matthew 4, uh, 9. Okay, to be worshipped. Yeah. Yeah. It says, and he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And worship. So that, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what he wanted. He, he yeah. tried to give away all these things. Uh, so that he can be God. Yeah. You know, he can be, he can be worshipped. And uh, many a times we, we do things. So for example, if someone has on a, let's say some somebody has a a chain on that is uh $2000 right they they're not going to just have it on and put it under their shirt mm. okay? because if under their shirt nobody sees it right <laughs> nobody nobody sees it so all of these things is that we want people to say or people to know that we have this or we have this or we can get this even though at times we borrow money and we go in debt mm -hmm. to get it. Yeah. So so many things that we want is not just that we we wanted to make our life happier with the case. We just want to make a statement. Yeah. That's a good point. And so if we some of the things we have, if nobody sees it, we are upset. So we want people to to see what it is, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. so that they can come and uh worship worship us so to speak uh and lucifer was the same was the same the same issue he was not content or satisfied with his um with his position so how can we avoid making those the uh, same mistake as lucifer well i i think um it's, it's covetousness is something that's very hard to detect sometimes mm -hmm. because it, it is, it, it's a thought, mm -hmm. um, it's a desire and, and for all purposes, it could be, um, you could be covet. I mean, you could be kind of like all outward, like good and everything like that, but in your heart, you're, you're coveting. Um, so it's, it's really hard to, to find out, but when you think about it, it, it it's also, it's a heart problem, right? <laughs> so uh, the only way to, to do it is to change your heart. And the only way you could change your heart is to give it to Christ. And so um, Jesus is the only one who can recreate you, uh, put in, you know, good thoughts and desires, and, you know, set everything right. And without him, um, then, you know, you could try to change all you want. You could try to not think about that one thing all you want, but you're going to fail. Right. So yeah. I think the first thing is to is to give it up to Jesus. Mm. Yeah, yes, I think it was a set in Psalms. Um, I think it was Psalm. You know, you're asking God to reveal whatever is hidden in you. 
that mm, you're not yes. aware of. Because it is something that is not, not you know, even Saint himself did not realize it, like Sister Boozy had said. You know, mm. it was something that just happened and realizing, well, this is what it is. Um, that with that little seed that was growing inside of him. And the same thing with, you know, pride, and which is what he had, the pride as well. You know, you're proud of something, but you could be mistaking that for pride. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you really may not be able to know the difference or see the difference until the Holy Spirit reveals that in you. Um, and so definitely uh, from time to time, we are to ask God, reveal whatever it is that's in us, in our heart, purify so that we can see any hidden sins that we need to fix and work on, because only him can help us with that. Yeah, uh, just mm -hmm. the verse you're talking about, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and mm. know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Yeah. So that should I, be I said think, on a daily. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. I think that um we need just that heart soul searching through prayer, asking God to just like, yeah, reveal these things in me. I might not even know I'm coveting, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we, we need God. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. Uh, it comes in, uh, you know, the ambition comes in in different ways, because uh, even as, you know, as pastors, you may covet uh, another church or you wish you were, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, having this size church or whatever the case is. Uh, but we just got to be uh, content with where God places, us, right? Yeah. And, Amen. Yeah. Let him, let him lead us in that way. All right. So position. And then let's look at... Uh, one for forbidden uh, possession. Um, let's go to Achan, right? <laughs> it's another example. Uh, so Joshua chapter 6, uh, Joshua chapter 6, uh, 18 to 19. Joshua 6, 18 and 19 it says, but keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. Hmm. Hmm. So they, they went into Jericho, you know, they, they destroyed Jericho uh, as part of the deal. Then you go and you take the spoil, right? So all of those things um, uh, the Israelites uh, would have taken. Uh, but they were not to be taken for personal gain. They were supposed to go into the treasury um, of the Lord. So what happened then? What happened to, to Achan? Let's, let, let's jump over to 721. Seven twenty one. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful cloak from Shinar and two hundred shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing fifty shekels, then I coveted them and took them. And see, they are hidden in the earth inside my tent with the silver underneath. All right. So we know the story. The 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 the, the you know Israelites was high, was uh, badly uh, defeated as a result of Achan's sin. Mm. And they, they searched in the camp, they couldn't find, finally Achan confessed, right? And so he said, I saw. <laughs> uh, and so this is not only a physical sight, but, but in his heart. And he said, I coveted them. Mm -hmm. And I took them. Yeah. Okay. So what... <laughs> um, no, this is this is a serious story because we know what happened to Achan, uh, you know, and, and his family as a result. But what we want to get here is that um, God said these things belong to me, yeah. and they should be in my treasury. And Achan said, Achan, the pressure was too much, and so he took them. He coveted them and he took them. Yeah. And so he kind of, you know, when I was reading this, you know, it. it for example, when uh, when we have jobs and uh, you know we're working for a little money, uh, a lot of people find it easy to 
to give back something to God. Mm. But you get a greater salary, you get bonuses, and, and you start making a lot of money. And you realize that the check that you're writing is getting bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you start committing and saying, uh, you know, if I, if, I, if I didn't return my tithe, then I could have lived in a bigger house. I could, mm-hmm. I could drive a, a more fancy car because all this money I'm giving to the church uh, is reducing uh, my budget for, um, for these things. And so we covet uh, what, belongs to, um, what belongs to God. And we see how, how dangerous uh, that is. Mm-hmm. So why did, why, why did God take this so seriously that he destroyed um, Achan and his family? Uh, he stole from God. Stole from the person who was providing for them, you know. And it's it's God has His rules and regulations, whether we understand it or not. There's a reason why He asks us to do certain things. We need to follow His commands. So it was set as a disciplinary action to let people know, warning: This is do not mess with my commands, do not break my laws. But not only that, He stole from them. So. Yeah, I, and and that 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 shows you how. Seriously, God takes covetousness. Mm-hmm. 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 I think um, in the Bible, it also said that uh, if you do, in, in, going back to Joshua 6, it said, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on, on it. And, mm. and um, I think to allow this to happen, it's going to affect other people, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, what is uh, Paul says, corrupt, uh, what is it? Um, bad company corrupts good habits, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so, um, uh, people have an influence. And so yeah. when they do something bad, uh, it influences other people. And they, they might think that they could get away with it or anything like and, and stuff like that. So um, to, you know, cut it off before it could spread um, uh, was, I, I think, um, what God uh, did here. Before it spreads, right? Because mm-hmm. it's the cancer, right? It, yeah. It's, uh, yep. Spreads. In other words, our sin can make other people suffer. Like yeah, Eve, that too. I'm thinking about Eve. They don't mention her in the lesson too much, but she comes with that that foot, you know, yeah. was yeah. beautiful to the eyes, to the sight. So she decided to eat it. And we all are paying the consequences <laughs> today. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and we're actually going to jump to, to that. So let, let's, since you mentioned, let's go there. Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. Uh, Eve is a, he, another example of um, of a person who was, I would say, infected with uh, the disease of covetousness. All right, Genesis uh, three and verse six. All right, uh, Genesis three six. It says, "When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food." and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Hmm. Hmm. So we saw Achan, right? Uh, he saw. Now Eve mm-hmm. saw. You know, we got to be careful with our eyesight, you know? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something wrong with the eyesight there. <laughs> because we are seeing... And we want what we see. Mm-hmm. So she saw that it was good for food and it was pleasing to the eyes. Pleasing, yeah. Mm. Pleasing. See, you see the senses here, right? And it deserved mm. to make one wise. Yeah. I think uh, there's that saying, you know, the grass always looks greener mm-hmm. on the yeah. other side. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then even um, it, it kind of looks like, you know, sometimes. Uh, you know, when you're in a buffet or something like that, or potluck, you know, uh, you don't want to eat with your eyes, right? Sometimes you look and you just feel like, you know, you're really hungry. And by the time you put it on your plate, it's already too much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought I, you know, the thought is like, yeah, I, I thought I wanted this. I thought yep. I needed this. And then all of a sudden, it's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're already regretting. <laughs> yeah. So, last thing. <laughs> Right, loss yes. and covetousness, mm-hmm. covetousness goes yeah. hand in hand, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we think uh, so. She she it was pleasing to the eyes, right? So mm -hmm. what the eyes is telling you uh, that the grass is green on the other side. <laughs> and you think that okay, only if I'm able to get this, right? Mm. Only if I get this, uh, I'll be the happiest person, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. All I yeah. need, you know. Yeah. And, and so uh, we get it, and then we realize that it's not all what it we thought it to be. Mm. So mm. she 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 her eyes deceive her, and uh, her desire she wanted to be wise. In other mm. words, she wanted to be able to know good from evil. But what mm. the, was that good for her? I no. mean, mm. God had already yeah. given her the wisdom that she needed to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. 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 created her beautiful with all the intelligence. Yeah. That, Satan yeah. was a little bit more cunning, you know. Yeah, Smart. yeah, yeah. Smart yeah. in that sense. Yeah, and we see yeah. the similarity yeah. there because you know Adam and Eve was created perfect beings, mm -hmm. and so they didn't know what's on the other side, mm -hmm. and that was curious. That that was that curiosity, like the curiosity killed the cat. They mm -hmm. wanted to know what's on the other side, even though they had everything. Satan wanted more, even though he had everything. Um, and so there's something that's that's in a in us that even as kids you see that with babies they want to go grocery shopping with them they want to touch everything they want everything they want everything and if they can't get it they're crying crying because they want that um, or a kid who's eat, who's eating too much candy you know and the next thing they don't feel good afterwards but they wanted right. it at that time right. and so it seems like it's in us now that we always want something we desire more we want to want what's you know what's um what we want we want what we see. Um, you know, what somebody else have, or we desire much more. And by then we become wise because we learn from our mistakes because then we're like, oh, I should have never done that, but it's too late. It's, it's late. just too late. Yeah. It's too late. That, that's not the kind of wisdom we want, right? No, <laughs> no, no. We want the one where we're learning from other people's mistakes, but somehow <laughs> we can't do that. We just want it, you know? <laughs> We want to learn from our own mistakes. Like some teenagers will say, well, I want to experience it for myself. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I should have not done, never done that. My parents were right. <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting, right? I don't know why we, you know, you can learn from someone else, but we mm -hmm. are like, no, uh, I can do it differently, right? I yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think if we uh, just dwell it on it so much, like keep coveting, then we just start uh, rationalizing in our head. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. you know um <laughs> just yep. only a little bit or whatever and, and then we start compromising um mm -hmm. but but i i think it's interesting um in the lesson uh that it pointed out that um um in in the verse when talking about um a mm -hmm. um that the word there coveted when you use those, those um coveted those goods the hebrew word translated um for coveted is also used in in positive sense mm -hmm. in in mm -hmm. other places in the Bible. Um, Daniel, like Daniel nine twenty three, says you know talking about um, Daniel that he was uh, greatly beloved, and that's the same um, root word for coveted. And so I, it, it's like a very thin line on like these desires that that can be good, and then mm -hmm. desires that can be really bad. And um, when you think about it, you know the Bible tells us that we should you know, be like God, we should reflect God, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> and then, but mm -hmm. when you look at Lucifer, yeah, he wanted to be like the most high, but in the wrong way, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the wrong way mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even Adam and Eve, um, when when uh, Eve was being tempted, uh, Lucifer said that, yeah, you're going to be like God. Like God. Right? Yeah. And so she desired mm -hmm. that, yes. even though, um, you know, you know, she was already created in the image of God, she already reflected God, but yet she felt like, oh yeah, maybe, you know, she, she believed something else, like, oh, I'm missing something else, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and that desire then, you know, it, it got twisted and, and corrupted, I, I believe, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, reflecting on what you said is they believe they're missing, and, and that's, mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. one key, that we always believe that we are missing out on something. Yeah. Mm. So yeah lack this, of, lack of contentment. Yeah, yeah, but we keep lack coming of, back contentment. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Word lack of content. That's exactly what it is. Yep. Yeah. 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 This uh, generation, they call it FOMO, fear of yes. missing out. Fear of missing out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you only live once, YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> so we have to go after it. Because <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, missing, you're missing something. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. And um, you realize that when you go together, you're not really missing anything. No. 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 Yeah. As we said, you know, many of us want to experience for ourselves. And yep. Which is sad, sad, uh, sad reality. So uh, you were talking about uh, rationalizing, and um, one of these uh, figures who are rat rationalizing um, different things, uh, Judas, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, we can always rationalize things. Okay, I can use this money to do this. I can do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> let, let's look at Judas' uh, uh, situation here in John chapter 12, uh, 1 to 8. All right, so we have we have this this uh, this woman who, uh, out of her gratitude towards God, um, were well, given all that she had, right, uh, a year's wages, and Judas didn't see it that way, right? <laughs> he he look at he look at he look at something else. Uh, so let's look at. Uh, we don't have to read everything, but. Um, uh, from verse uh, verse three uh, to verse uh, eight. It says, "Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii, denarii and given to the poor? Continue. Yes. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief <laughs> and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. Mm. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. All right. Mm. So <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, you know, I was reading this and I, you know, I had to laugh because of the way John was describing uh, Judas. Mm -hmm. right? and yep. said, uh, yep. First of all, he said uh, he's going to betray him, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> Setting the, <laughs> setting the, the, the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going to betray him. And then he said he was a, a thief. Um, mm -hmm. So so Judas is trying to be all pious and everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why should we waste uh, this amount of money? Uh, why, why, why do that? Why don't we just sell it and give it to the poor? Mm -hmm. And he's using that he had an intention of giving to the poor. Because uh -huh. he, he, is, he is stealing uh, from uh, from the poor. So, how would it that we use rationalization to say, uh, okay, um, I'm going to take I'm going to take my my money or my tithe or my offering, and I'm going to give it to the homeless person over there because uh -huh. I don't like what the church is doing with um, with my money. Is that is that is that a good way to to use uh, uh, God's money? Usually that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. People may have that intention. They think yep, it's good always. intention. You know, I'm gonna take it and give it to the poor, like they mm -hmm. care so much for the poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the covetousness that is coming to their heart. They don't even know something. Mm -hmm. Because you know, when we want to uh if we love God, we have to obey to his commandment. He's the one who asks us to give. And he said, You have robbed me when you don't give your tithe and your offering. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so, and so and so Judas, uh, money was his problem, and and he sold he you know sold Jesus uh, uh, for thirty pieces because he, I mean G Judas, I believe that Judas uh, thought that you know Jesus is going to get away you know he is performing more miracles and and so you know uh -huh. he didn't I, I didn't think he expect them to really uh, kill Jesus so Jesus performed so many miracles in the past he could have just mm -hmm. get away. 
<laughs> but his greed uh, for money, right? Uh, he, he was willing to, to, to betray his master uh, for, uh, for money. And how many times uh, we do that because we covet. Uh, yeah. So sometimes we live beyond our means and so we can't uh, do certain things, right? We can't get involved in church because, uh, you know, we, we are busy working. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are busy doing something else. And some people even go as far as uh, breaking the Sabbath in order to, to uh, you know, meet their, 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 their budget because mm -hmm. all they're thinking about is, you know, how can I keep up with the Joneses? And so if yep. I want to mm. keep up with the Joneses, I have to work uh, extra, extra hours. So that covetousness uh, leads to other spiritual, uh, other spiritual problems. Yeah, I, I think also um, now just uh, thinking about it a little more, that covetousness is also a lack of faith in, in, in God. Yes. Because yes. you're thinking that, oh, I need more. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like God, you know, isn't really providing, <laughs> you know, yep. God isn't enough for you. Right. Um, and so you feel like God is maybe holding something out on you. Mm -hmm. And so it's a distrust in him. And now you're trying to take matters into your own hand to, mm -hmm. to get what you feel like you're missing. Yep. Yep. Yes, that, that is so true. Uh, he's not, he's not fulfilling my needs. You know, uh, I need to do that. So I need to, um, I need to, to, to take action. Mm. Yep. That, that action leads to, to other issues. And it incurs more debt because now mm. they, because they want more and God is not giving them their more, they are working hard and they're breaking the Sabbath. They're doing, they're missing time with their family to purchase a bigger home and a bigger car. And now they got to make money for that. And, and so then they end up with a debt problem because they go beyond their means. And it really doesn't work out. It, it, it really mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, it just gives more pain uh, in the long run. Um, yeah. At home with the children, so that that's another problem. You know, they're doing mm -hmm. the thing at home, whatever the case is. So it's the lack of faith and uh, selfishness also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. When we yeah. follow God's plan, we we can never go wrong, right? I mean, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's look at uh, the last um, example of um, covetousness. Um, Ananias and um, his wife. Uh, in Acts chapter 5. All right, Acts chapter 5, and um, so let's let's look at verse uh, 1 and, um, and 2 first. Someone can read that. But a man named Ananias with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back from himself some of the proceeds and bought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. Mm. All right. So they, they, they sold the land uh, for more than they expected. And they should count that as a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. So what was the problem? Was it the amount that they returned? What, what, what was their problem, really? Where, where did they go wrong? After they, after they come back to Peter and, you know, Peter asks them, where, where are the cases? Because before you answer that, let's go to, um, uh, let's read, someone can read, uh, verse. <coughs> Peter make a rational argument here. All right. Verse 8. Verse 4. Verse 4. While it remained not... While it remained, was not your own, and after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Mm. All right, so they, they got more for the land. So let's say, let, let's put some numbers here, right? So let's suppose they pledge, uh, they pledge that they're going to give all the proceeds to the land, right? And they mm -hmm. estimated it to be let's say $20,000. They sold the land and they got $30,000, right? They got $30,000, which is a blessing, right? So they have an option. They could give $30,000 to the church or they can 
say to Peter, Peter, where well, we got thirty thousand dollars, but we would like to um mm -hmm. think about keeping ten thousand dollars and give the church twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Would that have been okay? Yeah. I think that would have been fine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think uh, it's 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 the fact that they said that they were going to give all, and they said that they gave all, but withheld some. So um, uh, that's what they lied about. They wanted to have an appearance of, 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 of what everyone else was doing, and you know, uh, an appearance of godliness, you could say, and uh, <laughs> and um, they, they yet you know, they lied. So yeah. and uh, that, that, was, that was the problem. Yeah, that covetousness leads to 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 lie. And Peter said, "It's in your hand. It's your money." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't have to come and lie about yep. it. Just mm -hmm. say we give twenty thousand dollars, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, as you as you pointed out, uh, having opinion, people have an opinion of us, right? That we are uh, sacrificial giving, and we give all. We give a hundred percent. That's what they wanted. They wanted that feedback from people, mm -hmm. and and so they lied, and as a result, uh, suffered the consequences of. Yep. So the, the, the lesson, uh, you know, for us is that, you know, we can covet so many different things. Is it that we, we are coveting um, opinions from people, we are coveting people possessions, we are coveting um, like Satan uh, worship or to be equal mm -hmm. with other people. And it begins, uh, it begins in, um, in the heart. So now we, we outline all of these things. Um, what are the solutions? How can we uh, overcome? Uh, what are the cure for covetousness? And there are many texts, but one I want us to focus on is First Timothy chapter six. First uh, Timothy chapter six, uh, verse uh, six to eighteen. I think uh, Paul here outlines uh, a very good cure. Uh, for uh, covetousness. See if you have it, please just read it, please. First Timothy six, verse six to eighteen. Six to eighteen. All right. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, Flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life of which, to which you were called when you were made, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this commandment to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which right. God will. I'm sorry. You can finish that verse and, and then. Okay. Uh... Which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right. Thank you. So can we come up with some solutions from these verses here? What would you say is the first thing uh, that we need to do? Remember. Yes, Sister Boozy. <laughs> Godliness with contentment is great. Godliness <laughs> with contentment. Yes. Yeah. The first thing be content. When you're a godly person, ask God to help help us to, to be content. Yeah. So yeah, contentment, because the, the issue is if I'm not content mm. with driving this car, then as soon as I get an upgrade. I'm not going to be content either because no. I, I want something even better, all right? Yeah. So contentment seems to be the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. you may be content, but it doesn't mean that you're not aspiring for better, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm living here. I'm starting off. I live in an apartment. I'm content with what I have. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I'm saving up to expand as, you know, whatever the case is, uh, and I get something else. But don't believe, we shouldn't believe that more is going to bring contentment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it really doesn't. And so godliness with contentment. So we have to learn to be content. And Paul yeah. says, Paul says uh, you know, clearly, he said, don't give me too much, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I become mm -hmm. hardy and, and proud. But at the same time, don't give me too little that I have to pay, right? <laughs> uh, and so he said, I've learned. So mm -hmm. he said, I've learned, right? Yeah. I've learned how okay. to be satisfied, right? It, yep. it's, mm. Be content. And then he's, and th that famous text that we use, he said, I can do all things through Christ. Mm -hmm. Give me strength. strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that contentment we can get uh, yeah. through, um, through Christ. Anything else we can we can we can point out here from uh, from the verse. We also need to remember that um, we came into this world with nothing. We're going to leave with this with, in this world with nothing. You know, there are many people who believe that they can take their treasures with them, or I'm leaving all my money for to go into the grave with me, or my Cadillac with me, or like those great pyramids that have all the gold and everything with them. Um, they really can't take it with them at all. And so we need to remind us of all this money that we're saving and accumulating. It goes away. It's going to be spent either by our generations afterwards, if you're saving it for them or not, but it just doesn't go with you at all. Very much, very, very, very much the case. So God, we need to be content. We also need to realize that uh, we, we are not taking it mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. us. And so, as Jesus said to the to the uh, to this uh, rich ruler, uh, uh, the guy who was breaking down his bonds and uh, let me expand and build more, mm -hmm. uh, he said, "Well, uh, tonight you 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 are dead. What, what's that, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. All those those expansion, exactly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, we can take them with you. Anything else uh, you well, you find here?" What I see in verse in verse ten, it says, "For the love of money really is awesome. the root of all kinds of evil." Mm -hmm. When we look at our world today, why they're fighting, why the war going on, it's, mm -hmm. it's the love of money. It's not money; yeah. it's the love of money. Yeah, mm -hmm. the root, the cause. Yep. of all the evil. So whether people are robbing a bank, people are stealing from other people. Uh, it's just the love of money. So yeah. we have to stop loving money. Money is a tool. Money is not something mm -hmm. that we love. We we mm -hmm. use it as a means to do certain things. Mm -hmm. But if we love money, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a problem. And that, uh, as we mentioned before, it's not only the rich that love money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or money yep. themselves. Or, yep. Yeah have that yeah, problem yeah, yeah yeah and even possessions um you see a lot of family dispute when when a family member die for land yep. mm. i mean it causes division just to have that land especially in the caribbean islands just to have that land you know um they're willing to do all that they can to accumulate that land um so they can build their house or to sell or something and make money out of it and even here we see that with property issues, um, the will to have this, we want this home, we want that. What's the will saying? And so it's it's things that they're coveting, the money or possessions or anything like that, they're willing to kill for it or don't even care that the person passed away. They just want to hear the will right after. What did they get from it? You know? <laughs> it is so sad. It is so yeah. sad. It very, is. Very, very sad. I think another thing that I, I noticed says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So yeah. it's godliness with something, right? With contentment. Mm -hmm. And so that also implies that you could have godliness without contentment. <laughs> and, mm. you know, it's, it's great loss. It's the opposite. And, yeah. and it, you know, and that's what Paul um, warns in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And, you know, he lists a, a big list of um, vices of, you know, mm -hmm. um, People in the last days, they're going to be 
lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, disobedient parents, all this. And then at the end, in verse 5, he says, they all have a form of godliness. Mm. They have a form of godliness, but they deny um, its power. They, they deny um, the power thereof. And so, mm. um, you know, godliness, it does look like something, right? <laughs> but yeah. um, it's a form. Right? Uh, yeah. And, and, but then I think the difference is, you know, are, you know, do we have it with contentment? Are, are we satisfied in God that God mm. is enough, right? That uh, I don't need anything else. So I, I, yeah. I think that's, that's what it is. Very much, very, very much, uh, very much the case. And um, in the last part of verse 10, it talks about um, many straight away from the, um, from the faith. Mm. Yeah. Then he makes an important point here that pierce themselves so many, many sorrows. Mm -hmm. or sorrows. Uh, people try to accumulate and to gain all this wealth. In the end, mm -hmm. uh, they end up, you know, in, in, in worse situation. They may get mm -hmm. the material things, but the pain that associated with that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't worth it. It doesn't worth it uh, mm -hmm. at all. All right, so uh, covetousness. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, just um, give you a final takeaway. Well, what message would you want to leave? What you get out from this lesson? Um, uh, post? I think one of the things I get away from it, from reading this, it reminded me of the Sabbath school quarterly that we had last year, the first, I'm um, not the last, October, November, December, the fourth quarter on death, dying, and a future hope. It started off with sin and talking about um, Lucifer. So I brought it back because it reminded me of the sin, how it came about, and we were going through that. One of the things that it said in lesson two at that time, um, when it talked about um, Eve and the different sins, and it says there are things that are not evil or wrong in themselves, but God has chosen them as tests of obedience. Mm. And I had in parentheses health, wealth. You know, there are things that are great, but you know they are used as obedience. And how do we apply them in our lives? Are we coveting them? Um, are we content with them? Um, you know, because God wants to give us. He created this beautiful world for them. So that means he wanted to give them everything. But there were things that he placed in the Garden of Eden as a test, mm -hmm. you know. And so there are things that we have in our life that we want or desire, um, but they can also be put as tests for us of where is our heart, where is our original intent. You know, are we content with what God is giving us to allow him to expand and enlarge our territory? Or are we going to just go ahead and do it ourselves? So that was the one final thing I realized is that God has chosen some of these things as tests for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pastor Buzi. What I take away from the lesson is uh, covetousness is something that we probably all experience at one time in our life. And we will continue to experience yep. as long yeah. as we're living in this world. Uh, we have to ask God to help us to be content. And God is faithful because he promised that he will not give us any temptation that we cannot bear. Yep. So he will yeah. be with us. He will give us victory over that sin. This is Amen. a sin that we all have to be careful of. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Pastor Jadmika. Yeah, I, I think um, covetousness, it's, it's, it's very hard to detect. And I, I think what it really is, um, whatever we covet, that, that object, that thing becomes our God, right? And um, we place it above God, and that's when just all things uh, just fall apart it, mm -hmm. with your life and, and with your faith. Because um, then you, that, the faith you had in God, now you're putting it in something else. Um, that's not God's word. So I, I think we have to really um, uh, focus and, and and pray that, you know, our, our one desire, our true desire should be um, only God and, and nothing else. Like if I have God, then I have am in need of nothing, right? You know, mm -hmm. seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you, right? Mm -hmm. um, God is enough. And um, I think... The world and Satan, they, they're always trying to throw that other message that, oh, you're not enough. God's not enough. You need to have this, this, or that. 
uh, you need to be popular, you need to be um, accepted by this group, or um, you need to have this, um, you know, the, the latest phone or the latest mm -hmm. whatever, um, you know, and, and it's never ending, it's never fulfilling. But when we have, when we put uh, our desire in God, that is always fulfilling. It says, you know, blessed are they that thirst, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, after righteousness, you know, for they shall be filled. And yeah. so um, I, I think if we, if our desire, and maybe, maybe our desire isn't right now God, and we, we notice that, but um, what, I, what I love about God is that we can pray so that he could change our desires, so that he could change our hearts, so that we could only seek after him. Amen. 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 Definitely, indeed. Uh, this covetousness is, is a serious, and uh, the lust after um, the flesh uh, is something that uh, we definitely have to seek and pray God about uh, for him to search our hearts. And so our desire will be for him. Yeah. Then um, provide, um, yes. Can, can I just share uh, um, a poem? Yeah, sure, I, I, sure. I wrote a poem. This is based off of um, Psalm 27. Uh, verse um, verse four, uh, which says, you know, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that mm -hmm. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, uh, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. And so, mm -hmm. um, focusing on that, I remember I wrote this a couple of years ago, um, eight years ago, uh, and I entitled it Desire, and it goes uh, something like this: One thing have I desired of the Lord. I have seen it in the promise of his word. Help me, Lord, to seek after this, to dwell with you in eternity bliss, to behold your beauty face to face. What privilege, such marvelous grace. Lord, let this desire not ever fade into a dream that would only wait, to inquire in your holy temple, your love so deep yet simple, and dwell in your house all my days that I may give you all my praise, to know you and have your perfect love revealed in your sacrifice thereof. Lord, may this love manifest in me to love unconditionally the people I see. Amen. 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 Thank you for thank sharing. You. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for that. And with that, we come to the end of our mm -hmm. study for, um, for this week. We pray that you are blessed and we pray that God will help us all, that our desire will be uh, after him and covetousness will having a place in uh, in our hearts. May God continue Amen. to bless you, and we will see you again next time where we continue to study the Word of God together. All right.